Microsoft goes big on World of Warcraft, your news update, and Royce and I get serious about gaming on this edition of State of the Bands Weekend, starting right now. Hello and welcome to Arbitrage, State of the Bands Weekend for January 22nd, 2022. I'm Joshua Stark. Microsoft is paying nearly $70 billion in cash for Activision Blizzard, the maker of Candy Crush and Call of Duty and World of Warcraft, as it seeks an edge in the fiercely competitive businesses of mobile gaming and virtual reality technology. The all-cash $68.7 billion deal could turn Microsoft, maker of the Xbox gaming system, into one of the world's largest video game companies and help it compete with tech rivals such as Meta, formerly Facebook, in creating immersive virtual worlds for both work and play. If the deal survives scrutiny from U.S. and European regulators in the coming months, it also could be one of the biggest tech acquisitions in history. Amazon's British website has backed away from plans to stop accepting Visa credit cards issued in the United Kingdom, saying that the move has just been put on hold while talks between the two sides continue. Amazon had announced the move in November, blaming the high fees Visa charges for processing credit card transactions. We are working closely with Visa on a potential solution that will enable customers to continue using their Visa credit cards on Amazon.co.uk, the retailer said in an email to customers. Amazon didn't rule out future action, but told customers it would give them advance notice of any changes related to the acceptance of Visa credit cards. AT&T will postpone new wireless service near some airports planned for this week after the nation's largest airline said that the service would interfere with aircraft technology and cause massive flight disruptions. The company said Tuesday it would delay turning on the new cell towers around runways at some airports, it did not say how many, and work with the federal regulators to settle a dispute over potential interference from new 5G service. As we reported earlier, airlines with Boeing 777s have turned to alternative transportation or canceled the flights altogether, while airlines running Airbus have continued normal flight patterns. The decision came after the airline industry raised the stakes in a showdown with AT&T and Verizon over plans to launch new 5G wireless service this week, warning that thousands of flights could be grounded or delayed if the rollout takes place near major airports. California prosecutors have filed two counts of vehicular manslaughter against the driver of a Tesla on autopilot who ran a red light, slammed into another car, and killed two people in 2019. The defendant appears to be the first person to be charged with a felony in the United States for a fatal crash involving a motorist who was using a partially automated driving system. Los Angeles County prosecutors filed the charges in October, but they came to light only last week. The driver, Kevin George Aziz Riyadh, 27, has pleaded not guilty. Riyadh, a limousine service driver, is free on bail while his case is pending. We've got lots more coming up on Arbitrage State of the Bands Weekend, including winners and losers and more news with Royce. Stick around. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This week's State of the Bands blog includes That's Tattoo Much EU, FB and Google getting sued again, who knew? And Royce and I get serious about gaming. Yeah. All this and more in this week's State of the Bands blog, available now at arbitragetrade.com. Now, let's go to the Chief Executive Officer of Arbitrage, Mr. Royce Wells, for more. Royce, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo. Uh, don't get it in Europe or anywhere, yeah. Apparently not. Apparently not. Th- this is really an interesting situation that's going on because the EU seems to be poking itself into places that... You know, well, why? I think they're trying to look out for the betterment of world people. Maybe not. Maybe not. But well, they're not actually bashing tattoos. To be fair, they're looking at the ink that's used in tattoos, and they're concerned about that some of the colors may actually eventually cause cancer, and they're trying to basically make sure everyone lives to see a longer life. Right. So with that being said, I think in 2023, they're uh, changing the colors, mainly the greens and the blues um, to a less hazardous uh, uh, dye or ink. So that way people can still have their tattoos, but just be more healthy and uh, conscious about that. Okay, I get that. I mean, sure. My tattoo is going to kill me one day. Yeah, (laughs) no, I don't think so. You never know. I mean, like, a lot of people don't like tattoos. A lot, of, Some people are indifferent. Some people actually love tattoos, and basically, if they could, they'd have them from head to toe tattooed. Okay, right? so here's the thing, all right? Tattoos, let's talk about them for a moment. You get buried in a certain cemetery. You can't, can't have a tattoo. You work in some healthcare and service-related jobs. You can't have tattoos. In some religions, you can't go to heaven with a tattoo. Yeah, I heard that. In Japan, you can't go bathe in a in a public bathhouse with a tattoo. Wow. Yeah. That, I did not know that part. Well, that one has to do with the fact that the Yakuza, the, the Japanese mob, they have tattoos all over the place. Uh. And tattoos are, are associated with mob-related activities. But come on. Yeah, uh, gangs here as well. Basically, I know some of the gangs... Uh, Depending uh, face tattoos specifically, I know that some gangs in in the uh, United States they have face tattoos. That's how you know they're in the gang. That's how they know that you killed somebody too. It's a a tear apparently. Oh wow! Did yeah. not know that. Yeah, I I just fig- just found that out. Um, but tattoos in themselves, you know. They're not necessarily a horrible thing, but the EU wants to wants to step in and kind of regulate that. They've been stepping in and kind of regulating a lot of things lately, including um, a lot of things that we'll be talking about. Um, monopolies, for one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Any government, every government, you know they're not looking out for your best interests overall, but they are still uh, they're a business, so they're trying to basically... Uh, get things moving. If they can sell another die versus the die that's currently being sold, they'll say it's this versus that every day. Well, you kind of wonder about the UK because they separated from the EU and Brexit. And uh, what's going on about that is that they're doing research on their own uh, links between tattoo ink and cancer. Oh, wow. So we'll see how that goes, and we'll follow that story for you. Coming up on Arbitrage State of the band's weekend we'll talk about more stuff with Royce yeah that's what I do there we go hi we're the Goo Goo Dolls we're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn but not every child can focus on classes and play dates nearly 13 million kids in the US face hunger that's one in six school lunch might be their only meal each day and it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry we're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile play and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. 
Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Take me to VR Church, or at least that's what DJ Soto says. He believes you can be saved through VR. Among the many interesting uses people have found for VR headsets, including sex, gambling, and other, well, interesting uses, DJ Soto and others have started Metaverse Churches. VR Church is a spiritual community which exists entirely in the Metaverse to celebrate God's love for the world. We believe church can be anywhere at any time with anyone, even in the Metaverse. The Metaverse is an immersive virtual reality experience where we can work, socialize, and even go to church, his website says. There was also something highly unusual about a recent church service where Pastor Greg Groeschel led two people to Jesus. The service was held in virtual reality. One church in multiple locations, said Groeschel in an Instagram post published Monday, now including Metaverse in Altspace VR, celebrating those who attended and the two people who decided to follow Jesus. Swipe to see. We're just getting started. Craig Groeschel is the pastor of Life Church, a multi site mega church hosted in Edmond, Oklahoma. His Instagram post from earlier this week shows a video clip of part of a virtual service where he invites people to follow Jesus. As the clip begins, Groeschel mentions forgiveness and knowing God, saying, Call on his name today. When you call on the name of Jesus, he hears your prayers. He forgives your sins, and by grace, he makes you new. Those who say, yes, I need his forgiveness today, I give my life to Jesus, if that's your prayer, lift your hands high right now. You see at least one person in the back of the virtual auditorium raise his or her hand at that point, after which Groeschel leads the attendees in a prayer. Carrie Newhoff, founding pastor of Connexus Church in Barrie, Ontario, commented on Groeschel's post saying, this is amazing, of course you're there. Author and speaker Christian Kane, who founded Propel Women and the A21 campaign also commented, just wow. Many people who responded to the post praised God and expressed how encouraging the news was. This type of innovation is why we have the Uversion app, said one. Talk about being ahead of the curve. The Uversion Bible app, which recently hit 500 million installs, was founded by Life Church pastor Bobby Gruenwald. Another user suggested that going to virtual reality, the church is fulfilling the Great Commission. A spokesperson for Life Church had this to say With recent emphasis on the metaverse, organizations around the globe are taking a closer look at how to leverage virtual reality, including the local church. Last weekend, Life Church hosted its second ever church service in Microsoft's virtual reality platform called Altspace VR. Nearly 100 people attended the service. While critics might question if real connections can be made in the metaverse, Life Church has seen countless lives changed through relationships in digital spaces over the years. With 15 years of online ministry experience, including services in Second Life in 2007, Life Church has found that people are often more willing to let their guard down and have deep, meaningful conversations more quickly from the safety of anonymity. We'll keep an eye on this one, as well as other interesting uses for VR, right here on State of the Bands Weekend. So stick around. Meet us in VR sometime, I guess. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm. Okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. 
If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. You're going to talk about some bad bedfellows, Royce. Facebook and Google are in a lawsuit together. Colluding? What the? I I never heard of that. What the what? Apparently. What the the Facebook? What the Facebook? (laughs) Apparently, 15 states have brought a lawsuit against Google uh, specifically, and uh, probably Facebook coming up. Um, over some sort of deal to manipulate sales of online advertising. So my ad words don't really work? Hey, hey, careful there, buddy. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, how much do we pay for ad words each month? And you can decide if they show or not, but you're going to charge regardless? Right. That, what? Congratulations. Welcome to online advertising. And the, and the better the word is, the more you can charge me for it? Okay. I like this. Congratulations, man. You, you just figured out the entire thing. But, but apparently... I, I heard that, that basically the, the cost of AdWords actually went down over the last decade or so they claim. Right? Well, yeah. So more does that mean more people are doing it? That's why it went down? Or basically, you know, I think Google's use of information... And a lot of people have said that Google's use of information, basically they have too much power because they have too much data. And they're target, but that's the heart of what makes Google, Google. So yeah, yeah, Google is a broker of information. I mean, yeah. it's words, it's, it's images, it's, you know, moving, you know, moving pictures, that sort of thing. Data. Data. Lots and lots of data. I mean, that, that's, what it, that's you, what it comes down to, right? Yeah. And those ad words that they're, they're, they're talking about, did you know that they made $101 billion uh, accounting for, and that, that $101 billion, 86 of that came from, 86% of that came from just ad words. That's amazing. Yeah, so if you got rid of their ad words, uh, they, they'd be hurting a little bit. We might see a, a pullback on Google possibly. I think so, uh, and these the state coalition that's being led by uh, by Ken um, Ken Paxton um, is really a juggernaut, and now a judge has said, "Hey, let's set you loose. Let's see what you can do." And we found out all sorts of information about what happened here. Apparently, they're accusing Google of what they call anti-competitive conduct and teaming up with Facebook. And the interesting thing is is that Sundar Pichai and uh, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg have apparently colluded together with this. We've got emails that are addressed directly to Mark, directly to Sundar, um, saying, hey, we need your approval to move forward. You know, and and that sort of thing. The the language saying that that uh, Pichai personally signed off on the deal, and but did you hear about what's what's going on uh, with the FBI in Paxton? So like somehow the FBI are now separately investigating whether Paxton, you know, a close friend of Donald Trump you know, had anything to do with it. So basically they're trying to find dirt on him since he's kind of whistleblowing on them. You know, I have said this from the beginning, and I'm going to keep on saying it. We're going to keep on giving it to you. The truth is the truth, Royce. And we're going to keep giving you. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. 
If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Play with these picks, traders, on Winners and Losers Recreation Edition. First up in the winner's bracket, this winner up 3% designs and produces toys and consumer products worldwide. The company operates through North America, international, and American girl segments. It sells its products directly to consumers through its catalog, website, and proprietary retail stores, retailers, including discount and freestanding toy stores, chain stores, department stores, and other retail outlets and wholesalers, as well as through agents and distributors. Mattel, symbol M-A-T, starts at twenty-one sixty-four a share. And a first for winners and losers, that's all the winners in this category. So let's go to losers. Losers this week, down 13%. This loser develops, produces, and markets toys, consumables, and electronics, and related products worldwide. The company operates through two segments, toys and consumer products, and Halloween. It offers action figures and accessories such as licensed characters, toy vehicles and accessories, dolls and accessories including small, large, fashion, and baby dolls based on licenses as well as infant and preschool products, private label products as well as foot-to-floor ride-on products, inflatable environments, tents, and wagons. Jack's Pacific, symbol J-A-K-K, starts at 1023 a share. Next at 12% down, this loser designs, manufactures, and sells golf clubs and golf balls, apparel, gear, and other products. It operates through two segments, golf equipment and apparel, gear, and other. Callaway Golf, symbol E-L-Y, starts at $27.98 a share. Next at 11% down, this loser, a fitness solutions company, designs, develops, sources, and markets cardio and strength fitness products and related accessories for consumer and commercial use in the United States, Canada, and internationally. This company operates in two segments, direct and retail. Nautilus Group, symbol NLS, starts at 507 a share. Here's another loser for you. At 10% down, this loser manufactures and sells sporting goods in North America, Europe, and internationally. The company manufactures, imports, and distributes various sporting good brands in basketball goals, archery, indoor and outdoor game recreation, and fitness products. Escalade Incorporated, symbol ESCA, starts at 1457. And last, at 8% down, this loser designs, manufactures, and markets seasonal and outdoor recreational products for fishing worldwide. It operates through through four segments, fishing, camping, watercraft recreation, and diving. Johnson Outdoors, symbol J-O-U-T, starts at $85.69 a share. Winners and Losers is provided for informational purposes only and does not constitute advice and trading. Percentages and stock prices were current as time of recording. Arbitrage Trade Analytics LLC is solely responsible for the content of this podcast, but you should seek out the assistance of a licensed professional for investment advice. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Royce, how's your gaming these days? Uh, I haven't played a while in four years. Well, I tell you, Microsoft is ponying up about 70 billion bucks to make sure that you play your WoW. Um, okay. Uh, man. Does that mean Hearthstone 2? No. That means pretty much, pretty much... Overwatch? Yeah. No. Yeah. Activision Blizzard was acquired for seventy billion dollars. About seventy billion. It's like sixty eight point seven billion. But who's counting? Wow. That's a cash deal, by the way. That's a cash deal? That was a cash deal. That All was right. a cash deal. So so 
this is the biggest acquisition, biggest tech acquisition in history right now. If this goes through, it's bigger than Dell's acquisition of EMC uh, in 2016 for around $60 billion. So does that mean Microsoft is trying to become a big-time gamer now and maybe leaving the OS arena? So they were always pretty big in games. I mean, you know, Microsoft Studios started out, and they did really good with what they did. Uh, Phil Spencer was, was head of that. But, of course, they acquired Bethesda back a couple of years ago. And, I mean, they, they have really started to do some major work in trying to get some exclusivity things going here for for PC and for um and for for um, console console yeah. yeah um Zenimax Media which is the parent company of Bethesda Softworks it's popular games like uh Elder Scrolls Doom and Fallout you know oh yeah and Doom. that 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 was a good one and yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and uh, the thing is here is that that Microsoft is making a huge play, and and they're 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 just they're putting all their eggs in, in a basket that will make them the largest video game company in the world. Uh oh, that should raise red flags. Here's the thing, Sony, pay close attention, because. Yeah. With this acquisition, it puts them in an amazing position. Um, congratulations to Blizzard and Aqu Act Activision because all of a sudden, the 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 things that happened a year ago with them with uh, sexual harassment and that sort of thing, they've kind of gone by the wayside now because of yeah. this. Yeah, that new acquisition may actually allow that allow that to get swept under the rug because you got new management. Yeah. But here's the play. Okay. okay. Sony, pay attention. Get get Valve Media, which has the Steam Network and has a VR platform. Yeah. And get Take-Two Interactive with the GTA oh, franchise. Oh, that's a powerhouse. Yes. I didn't think about that. The GTA franchise. Combine Red all those Dead two Redemption, together. Combine Woo. those two together. And by the way, they just acquired Zynga. By the way, I forgot no. about that. Forgot about that. Take two just acquired Zynga. So what I'm thinking here is that Sony can survive this this war with words with friends. <laughs> with words with friends. Congratulations, Sony. <laughs> we'll see how this rolls out and we'll keep an eye on it as well as we go through. I can guarantee you this is not the last of this. Oh no. It's going to be Titans, Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next weekend and on Monday for more Arbitrage State of the Bands daily. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is a privately held market research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the content of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to be investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, please visit Arbitrage Trade 